Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we talked about the different components of the horse intestinal system, the large, the small intestines, and we followed food through the intestinal tract. But in this video, I wanna focus on some of the problematic parts of this intestinal system. If you speak with any vet who works with horses, they'll tell you that colic is a major concern and typically pathological issues with the horse concerning the uh, intestinal tract is pretty common. So here I want to touch on some of the points in the intestinal system where pathological issues can arise. When we talk about a digestive system like that of the horse, what we have to understand is that there's a lot of regions where food will work in the direction against gravity. So it's moving from a lower area to a higher area. Then it might go back down to a lower area, but eventually it's going to come back up to a higher elevation. And anytime we have this movement against gravity, there's a risk for some type of uh, blockage or resistance. So the first area where we see this type of resistance is here in light blue, where we have the ileum meeting with the cecum at the ileocecal junction. We have the food moving upwards against gravity into the cecum. So here is our first area of problematic concern. Uh, if the food is too dry, if the horse is stressed and isn't drinking enough water, then the food has difficulty actually moving from the ileum into the cecum. Once it's in the cecum, the food will move through the cecum into the ascending colon and the ventral and dorsal horns of the ascending colon. But uh, where we have another region of resistance, as we move through this ventral colon, is going from the left ventral colon to the left dorsal colon right here. So we have food, let me switch this to black. So we have food going this way and moving up right here. And where we have this movement upwards, this again is another region of resistance that can be problematic in, in horses. So that's the second part. The third area where we have some problems that can arise is the, the food is moving through this thick lumen and it's very wide and there's lots of space but at the end of the right dorsal colon we have this region here where the lumen is going to significantly be narrowed so when we look at the ascending colon right here it's quite wide but when we look at the transverse colon, all that food from the ascending colon has to be pushed from this wide lumen into this narrow lumen of the transverse colon. And this can be problematic as well for the similar reasons as we talked about with the other cases. So uh, what we have is potential for blockage or resistance of the food, making it through to the next section of the intestinal tract. The last part I want to talk about today is when food has finally made it through the transverse colon and enters into the descending colon. What's special about the descending colon is that we have this mesocolon, just like other parts of the intestinal system, that's hanging from the dorsal abdominal wall. And this mesocolon in horses is particularly long. In carnivores, ruminants, pigs, we don't have such a long dorsal mesocolon. So what this allows in the horse is extreme mobility. And in this situation for horses, it's not a very good thing because this excessive mobility can also result in increased chance of torsion. So if we have a twisting inside of the descending colon that causes it to flip or bend in an awkward position, then the food has no way of getting through the descending colon. Colon. And again, we end up with some type of blockage. This is particularly bad situation if we have a torsion because that can cut off blood supply to the tissue of the colon. And then you're left with a much bigger problem than just a uh, blockage of food. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope it was useful and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.